Improving the roster before the trade deadline is something that a lot of teams are, are going to be looking into. So today, we're going to do the same thing for the St. Louis Cardinals. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Louvre and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Also on YouTube, if you want to uh, check us out, what we look like, what kind of uh, nonsense is going on in our background, you want to see photos and stuff that we throw up there from time to time, make sure you come on over to YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, interact with us, and hit that notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. So the St. Louis Cardinals they take two of three from the Pittsburgh Pirates, and they're going to be in Chicago this weekend. Huge weekend series facing the Cubs. You know every matchup inside your own division because there's less games means they're that much more important nowadays. And joining me today to talk some Cardinal baseball is your friend and mine, Mr. Thomas Govain. Well-known writer for RedbirdRants.com. <laughs> Thomas, how's life treating you now that uh, summertime is here? Everything good? It is lovely. I'm a teacher, so I'm off. I get my break. I had, I've got two kids I'm taking care of, but I get to hang around and have some fun still. And talk some Cardinal baseball. That's what we're into today. Nothing Cardinals better. have been pretty good, Thomas. Uh, 18 and 12 over their last 30 games. I want to steal the line from... Uh, major league where hey if you haven't noticed and judging by the attendance you haven't uh cardinals are now 18 to 12 over their last 30 <laughs> the only teams with a better record so far in that time frame of 30 days and 30 games is the yankees the phillies the guardians and the orioles now three of those teams we expected to see there the guardians have been a huge surprise in the al central and then you have the cardinals tied with the seattle mariners at 18 and 12 it's been it's been much better than people realize, don't you think? Because it feels like if you talk to fans around St. Louis that this team is terrible and an embarrassment to be on the field, and that's not really the case. No, it's not. Uh, I think the hole we dug so early on <clears throat> really hurt the team. And Cardinal fans are so passionate. I mean, we just want 95 wins every year. We want two out of three games in a series, and sometimes that just doesn't happen. But this is a very good stretch should be happy about it. Yeah. And because of this stretch that they've been on, uh, and I mentioned in yesterday's show that like, you know, they're, they're hovering around 500, which I know unacceptable to us Cardinal fans. We want better than that. We deserve better than that, but it is the reality right now, but 500 has got them in second place in the NL central. It's also got them right there for the NL wild card spot, that third one. And that means the trade deadline, which isn't until the end of July. So there's a lot of time where things could get even better or it could go worse. But it, it appears that it'll be a chance for the Cardinals to add this year as opposed to what happened last year where they had to trade assets away. And you recently did an article about some additions that the team can make. And uh, you focused on the outfield. And this is due to the comments that president of baseball operations, John Mozalak, made about being in shop mode and that, you know, he, he brought up a fifth starter or something that they're, they're interested in. And then they also brought, and he also brought up a right-handed hitting outfielder who could play some center field. So kind of specific about the type of player they were looking for. Um, do you agree with Mo's assessment here? Are those the two spots that you think this team needs somebody the most? I'd say so, especially right now. I mean, look at our, when everybody's healthy, we've got, two, three corner outfielders and Burleson and Donovan and Newt Bar, who all bat left-handed. So yeah. just to have a right-handed, especially someone with some pop to fill in in the outfield would be nice. Yeah. And uh, this is no offense to Michael Ciani, who we, we, we love <laughs> here at locked on Cardinals, but uh, you know, as great as he is defensively, 
there's just not a lot of offense there. And as you mentioned, left-handed bats got a bunch of them in the outfield. So let's get into the list here. Uh, we'll start off with a name that is quite familiar with Cardinals fans because he was a fan favorite. He won a gold glove wearing the Cardinal uniform, and that's Harrison Bader, who is uh, now with the Mets. How come uh, Harrison Bader makes sense for this team? Uh, I think, first of all, it's the nostalgia aspect of it to bring Harrison Bader back. He was always a grinder for the team. His defense was stellar, top of the league. But his offense has really picked up this year. He's got a 103 WRC+. plus. He's not hitting for much power. He never really has. But he'll get on base for you. He's still got some speed left. He is a primary center fielder, which kind of complicates things, especially once Tommy Edmond comes back. But I'm sure that he'd be willing to take some corner spots or even some time on the bench just to come in and be a reserve. Yeah, and to get on a winning team. Now, the Mets is a is a team that we all think that they're just awful this year and they haven't been that good. But because of this third wild card spot, they're not that far out. So, again, no. things could fluctuate on uh, who's going to be available and who's not going to be available uh, as time moves on as we get closer to the trade deadline. But I don't think you're going to get a lot of arguments with Cardinal fans where if John Moselec went out and brought Harrison Bader back, that you'd get a lot of pushback on that. I know you're going to get some people who'd be like, okay, just going to get another former Cardinal along with Carpenter. And you know what I mean? That you'll yeah. get that from some people, but if he contributes, they'll shut up. Yeah. <laughs> they He's had a great year so far. Problems. Yeah. Uh, how about we go somebody outside the box a little bit here? Uh, this is a guy who he's with the angels organization He's a guy I've had my eye on because you look at him and you're just like, wow, that dude is going to be a stud. Like he just looks like a stud, but the numbers haven't trans to, you know, coming from the minor leagues where he's been really, really good to the, the major leagues where they, they, the numbers haven't been quite what people thought they were going to be. He was a former top prospect with the angels and that's Joe Adele. Tell us about him. He has some serious power. Um, in the minors, I don't think his slugging percentage dropped below 450. He has, He's at 433 right now. His ISO is always above 200. He's got crazy power, but the problem is that he strikes out over 30% of the time, sometimes even 40% of the time. Yeah. So he's not going to get on base very often. His average is going to look pretty bad. I know that's where a lot of people go first is the batting average, but he can play center field in a pinch. His speed is there. He's got a pretty good arm. I think he'd fit pretty well so long as people are okay with seeing strikeouts and a good portion of his at-bats just to get the power up there too. Yeah, that's something that I despise about this game of baseball these days is that strikeouts are just accepted. So I'd probably go nuts watching Joe Adele <laughs> bat for the Cardinals. But you, you got to admit that because he's still 25 years old, so it's not like we're talking about a dude way past his prime and you know, missed his window to become something special in this league. He's 25, you know, we talk about Dylan Carlson where we're like, well, but he's still only 25. <clears throat> Same thing with Joe Adele. Uh, will the angels be willing to move him or do they want to hang on to him? Um, we don't really know yet, but six, three, two fifteen, serious power. Uh, if you do fantasy baseball, you've seen him on some lists of guys to keep an eye on. So uh, certainly somebody that, yeah, great. If you could bring him on. And what if you unlock something with Joe Waddell? And I know fans are going to be like, what, this coaching staff is going to unlock anything <laughs> about anybody? But it could happen. It could happen. So, you, never know. Uh, you know, Mason Wynn's doing just fine under this coaching staff. Uh, right. So that's somebody else uh, to also keep an eye on. How about another guy that, that seems to make sense and it doesn't hurt that he is also from the St. Louis area? And that's Matt Beerling from the Tigers, who uh, also went to CBC. Yeah, I don't like mentioning that part being a Shamanad grad myself, but we'll get past <laughs> we'll get past the CBC, the high school drama. Um, yes, he he's a pretty much utility guy. He's played multiple positions throughout his career. He's gone on the infield, he's played corner outfield, he's dabbled in center. So he brings that versatility that the team always looks for, especially with guys like Edmund and Donovan. Um, his offense has actually been pretty good. He is so let me pull it up right here. He's got a 116 WRC plus. His slugging is 462, so he brings the pop that Jose or that uh, Joe Adele does without the strikeout risk. He's having a really good offensive year. He's not going to hit in the middle of the lineup, but he'll play solid defense for you. He can hit sixth, seventh, and he'll he'll deepen the the batting order a little bit more too. 
Yeah. Uh, I think I saw OPS plus of uh, 115 right now. You know, league average yep. is 100. So uh, that's something that, and again, because fans are going to be like, well, what about like Luis Robert Jr.? Why don't you just go, go for the big guy? And the thing is, is they don't want to go after a big guy. You know, that's, yep. that's not the idea here. Because when you look at some of the names that, you know, are hurt right now, I mean, we've got a lot of outfielders. Again, it, it seems like it would be a good problem to have, but you keep getting the injuries. You know, we, wh where's Jordan Walker going to fit into things uh, yep. down the line this year? That's another uh, variable we don't really know. We're not sure yet. <laughs> so uh, there might be the case where they don't need to trade for anybody. If you get Tommy Edmond back and you get Jordan Walker back, there's two right-handed bats right there. They can uh, play the outfield. So um, it kind of depends on the health and uh, if Jordan Walker can produce the way he was in the second half of last season where everybody was pretty darn happy with him and uh, if he continues to to get better in the outfield. But again, uh, something we'll keep an eye on as uh, we move closer and closer to the trade deadline, which again is at the end of July. So um, you can read there are two more people on Thomas's list, by the way. We're going to have the uh, article linked in the description so you guys go click on that and check out the other two guys that he's got listed there but uh three solid options for the cardinals moving forward if they decide to make a move for a right-handed bat in the outfield uh coming up next i want to talk about uh you know the cardinals pitching staff pretty darn good this past week some great numbers and one guy in particular uh you feel is kind of kind of going under the radar a little bit so we're going to talk about him next on locked on cardinals Here on Locked on Cardinals, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, playoffs, trade deadline. Obviously, we're talking about that today. Uh, it's year-round. It's year-round discussion about the Cardinals, and you know what else is year-round? Collection season. Unfortunately, just because tax season is over, that doesn't mean that the IRS is just going to stop coming after you for your unfiled taxes. They don't stop. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, and even seize your property. So don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. I've got a bunch of different broadcasting jobs, which means I get paychecks from all sorts of different places. And things get confusing because i got to fill out different forms. It pushes me into different tax brackets. Uh, i got different amounts going to federal and state, and it, it all gets a little confusing. So that's why... The experts who have over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau are the people you go with. Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning like me, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing your wins, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. You can check out the link in this episode description down below and in the show notes. Why wait? Why wait? Keep stressing over tax issues. Don't let it happen to you. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed tax professionals by calling 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Then make the switch to Locked On Sports today, which is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. And it's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. It's 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. Leave your comments uh, on what me and Thomas are talking about today on YouTube as well as on Twitter X anytime you want your feedback is always welcomed and encouraged. Uh, you can follow Thomas at uh, Thomas Govain online. So spell out your name for them, Thomas, for our audio listeners. It's a G A U V A I N. It's a tough one. It can, it can be a little bit tough, but yeah. if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it right there in all its glory. So very easy. Uh, let's talk about Miles Michaelis, Thomas. Uh, Miles Michaelis obviously had a, a, a pitcher's duel against Paul Skeens recently in this uh, Pirates series, which I t I've, I've said this before. I'm not a huge fan of pitchers duels very often because I like a little something going on, but there was just a different feel about things at the ballpark against Skeens. You know, it had kind of that playoff atmosphere. The Cardinals fans got to see Skeens for the first time, top pitching prospect in all of baseball. And Miles Michaelis went toe-to-toe -to -toe with this big boy and kind of outdueled him. And he's been 
pretty good recently and not as bad as everybody thinks so far here in 2024. Tell us about Miles Michaelis and why people might be underestimating the Lizard King a little bit. You look at his game log, he's got 14 starts so far this year, and really only four of them are blow-ups. The rest of them are pretty much what you'd want out of your fourth, fifth starter, whatever you want to deem Miles Michaelis third starter, I guess, for our rotation. But really only four of them have been, have been bad. And in his last six starts, he's only had one bad inning in five of them. Whereas the rest of the innings, he's been lights out, essentially. He's got, going back to uh, May 12th against the Brewers, he's gone six innings, five innings, six, 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 and then seven most recently against the Pirates. He's given up three or fewer runs in each of those. So he's been very serviceable for us. And dare I say, good. <laughs> and, and that's the thing about Miles, too, is like, I think what throws people off a lot might be the fact that they gave him the extension and they're paying him a, a decent chunk of change. And the results, I feel like Cardinal fans feel like for that amount of money, they should be getting more for their buck. But at the same time, that's kind of the way things are with pitching these days, where you are having to pay four and five starters of your rotation the same kind of money that Miles Michael is, is making. And, you know, I brought it up over and over this year. Like, almost every game, it's like one inning really comes up and bites him in the butt. Like, it's not like he's just getting <laughs> giving up one this inning and then two, two innings later and then three more later on. It's always like one inning, things just kind of go sideways with miles which is why you're seeing him in some of these games you know ollie's taking him out a little bit earlier despite the pitch count being really low because he knows that the the batting order is getting ready to turn over for a third time and that's when a lot of the damage is happening uh, mm -hmm. uh against miles so um when he avoids that ugly ugly inning things go pretty darn well for miles i mean how many times have we said this year where he's like cruising through three and then something happens and uh things go a little haywire like that that just always seems to be the problem for him yeah i mean and if you go back to may 12th he gave up uh three runs in the first inning but then went five more innings clean uh against the phillies on may 31st it was a two-run home run by brandon marsh but everything else was clean so he's just got that one blip and it looks bad at the end to see three runs given up but if you think it's just one bad inning he kept the team in the game for the bulk of the game. And he's been very healthy for us the last three years, four years, which is something that not every pitching staff can say, that they have a guy who can go out 200 innings each year. Yeah, he takes the ball, he eats the innings, and I, I know he gives up the hits and he gives up the home runs and stuff. But the idea that every guy that you're going to have in your rotation is going to be some sort of Cy Young award-winning type of pitcher, it's uh, it's a bit ludicrous. Even the best teams in baseball. I know the Phillies are weird because they got all kinds of dudes, it seems like, <laughs> that are coming out of nowhere. But the four and five guy in each rotation for most teams is very Miles Michaelis-like. And yep. uh, it, it's something that I know the Cardinal fans want more, um, but – He's very serviceable. Like, he's not he as bad as we all think. And the team loves him. The coaches love him. And uh, I, I've i been a, a Miles Michaelis backer for, for a while. And uh, I caught some hell for it last year. So I, I'm really pleased to see him turning things around <laughs> and doing well. Now, if he goes out and gets bombed this weekend at Wrigley, everybody's going to hate bad. him again. But that's, uh, <laughs> that's part of being a, a starting pitcher in the major league, specifically in a uh, – you know, in a rivalry between uh, teams like the Cardinals and the Cubs. So hopefully that does not happen. But uh, you've got more on Miles Michaelis as well as a bunch of other stories at RedbirdRants.com. Again, we'll have uh, the link to the trade story. Uh, we'll have the link to the Miles Michaelis stuff uh, available to you guys in the show notes and in the comments section down below. Speaking of comments, Thomas, we've got some comments from some uh, some fans, and they've got some questions for you. They need some things answered, so I hope you're ready. We're gonna be. Uh, I'll going, do my best. We're gonna go to those questions here coming up next on this edition of Locked On Cardinals. Now, going to baseball games in St. Louis is a tradition. Road trips to Chicago to go see the Cubbies at Wrigley. Cardinals Cubs this weekend. Something I think every Cardinal fan should try to experience at least once in their lifetime. And when you need tickets, you go to the Game Time app. I'm telling you, they've got them for you. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes tickets getting 
ticket, you know, picking up your tickets. It's faster and it's easier with the Game Time app. Prices on the app they actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. So I was looking at, at tickets just a, a few moments ago before uh, we started recording on the Game Time app. Uh, it tells you right away that there's a there's a giveaway going on. So Bud Friday's Mesh Tank giveaway tonight at Wrigley apparently, or this afternoon I should say, is happening. So. They let you know up front that that's something that you got to contend with, that that there's going to be a little more popularity for the game because of the giveaway. Uh, I always on my on my app, I like to do the all in pricing so that you know exactly how much you're spending up front that you don't go to checkout. And they're like, wait, what what is all this? You know, it gives you the all in pricing so you know exactly what you're getting into. And I found tickets for today's game anywhere from eighty five dollars and up. Uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands of tickets available. I mean, they were all over the place. Uh, they've got last minute deals where you can save up to 60% buying last minute for not only sports, but you know, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. Uh, they had a ton of flash deals uh, at Wrigley this afternoon, which makes you uh, save even more with these exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game. Uh, you had $107 down the line and left, $119 on the Cardinals' third base side. I know that sounds expensive, but it's Wrigley Field. You would be surprised how much these tickets are going for. And you can get them for these prices right now. They've got the best deals available. Like those pop up and show you, hey, this is the best deal going right now. It's a really great app. So download it today. Create an account. Use the code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Again, download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem the code Locked on MLB. L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows, which cover every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, let's get into some listener questions. Are you ready for this, Thomas? I've never done this to you yet, so I hope... uh, you are prepared. It's like, uh, you know, it's like flash rounds here. Questions, right. questions, and we got to give them answers or they're going to yell at us. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with uh, Dave here. We're going to, we'll give you an easy one to warm up with here, Thomas. All right. I don't hate the Rickwood uniforms, but they remind me of the Astros and the Mets. Do you guys actually like these? Now on YouTube, I can actually throw up a picture of this one. I got uh, the Arenado version of it. So that's what they look like. So this is the game that's going to be happening on the 20th against San Francisco, who also have some uh, specialty uniforms there. That's what the hat looks like. And uh, when these got released earlier this week, I actually asked everybody, I was like, uh, do you guys like, like them better or worse than the Connect, the City Connect jerseys that the Cardinals got this year? Because there was a lot of pushback. Not everybody was thrilled with those either. I feel like it's impossible to make anybody happy these days. But <laughs> what did you think of the Rickwood uh, uniforms? Are, are you cool with them? I, I'll point out one of my favorite things. I love that there's no name on the back. I love yeah. that aspect of it. It's, it's a very classic kind of look. And uh, I dig that. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on these? You cool with them? I am. Yeah. I, I mean, I could see what the guy was talking about with the design of the Astros and the Mets, especially that striped down the middle. Yeah. But it's it's a nice throwback. Uh, I like the history behind it. I know uh, there was a few people who, with the City Connect jerseys, I don't, the way the buttons work, some of the letters didn't quite line up when you buttoned it the way. But oh, this really? looks like it's nice. And I I saw I thought I saw something like that online. But this looks like it's nice and balanced. So I guess for those of us who have OCD out there, this, uh, this is going to fit your bill. When it came to the City Connect, like I, I didn't have really a problem with the the jersey so much because I always dug the spring training red that they would wear yeah. the batting practice red. I I did not like the hats. I just don't like the font. Like I right. I wanted the the hats that they're using for batting practice and the the interviews post game and stuff they're wearing. I wanted that to be their City Connect hat. I thought right. that would I thought that would have looked awesome, but uh, yeah. it didn't work out there. Uh, this one, navy blue with the white STL. I don't know. It's got all. It's got a classic look to it. So, I'm a fan. I um, I don't got any issues with it. I mean, it's a, it's one game. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. not like they're yeah. gonna be wearing these all the time. So, everybody relax a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's just a jersey. Yeah, Keith. Any updates on Tommy Edmond? Um, 
I the latest I saw Thomas is that he is taking batting practice from both sides of the plate. And that's about it. That's all I know. We've seen him out at Bush Stadium working out and playing catch and stuff like that. Is there anything that you've heard or seen any other updates besides that for Tommy Edmond? That's all I've seen. Um, I saw, I think it was Jeff Jones posted a video of him playing catch with Contreras last week yeah. or earlier this week. Uh, every, every beat writer reported yesterday that he's just taking batting practice. I don't think he'll go out on a rehab start this month, but honestly, it's June 14th. Anything can change in the next two weeks still. So, Yeah, it, it starts to feel more and more because I was the guy that said, I don't expect him to play at all this year. Just put it in your mind that he's not available. <laughs> and if he comes back, cool. But if he doesn't, at least you're not shocked by it. But uh, it, it seems to be that he's progressing and that it feels like more of like a post all-star game type of thing now. Yeah. But, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get him out on the games probably around that time and we'll see where he's at. Cause uh, you really don't know until you get him into a, a game like scenario and see how he holds up, you know, practice is practice, right? So uh, yeah. you gotta, you gotta see how he reacts to playing every day. And it's, it's again, when we talk about those those trades earlier in the show about pulling in a right-handed bat, if you get Tommy Edmund and Jordan Walker, those are some pretty good bats <laughs> that That's, you would be adding. Yeah, I, I just wrote something about that. The, the phrase getting an injured player back is like making a trade. People hate oh, that. Yeah, but, I mean, mean, fans hate that so much. But in this case, we haven't had Edmund all year. We've yeah. barely had Lars Newbar or Jordan Walker. Like These could, in a way, could be like a trade. <laughs> That's the thing, too, is that I know it's 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 annoying to hear that, and it's a very mosaic way to approach the trade deadline. But think about these names that are you got. Yeah. These are just the outfielders: Edmund, Walker, and Newt Bar. Hopefully, coming back. Newt's starting to do some uh, rotational work, but it's an oblique. We know that's a very sensitive injury. But Wilson Contreras, who is you know a top three hitting catcher in all of baseball, and those are our four starters. If that's yeah. an outfield and a catcher, that's... Yeah, I know, I know. And uh, if you bring all four of those guys back, think about the depth that you've built on this team where some of these guys who were starting... Now you got to start making decisions. I'm like, well, hell, who do we bench now? Because right. some of these guys, you know, I, obviously catching-wise, Pedro Paul, has, he, he could go back down. You know, you understand that, <laughs> that move. You know, it's uh, he's a backup catcher at this point. But, you know, you've seen Alec Burleson, you know, be very very good he's like yeah. one of the second best hitter on the team behind mason win so far so uh but like you're not gonna throw him on the bench are you you know siani can go back to where he was where he's kind of your depth piece and stuff but uh you know there's gonna be some decisions that have to be made so um again good problem to have but you got to get all these guys on the right page you got to get them all healthy first so yeah um we'll see we'll see uh and finally one more question here uh, from Jared, I want the Cardinals to target some pitching. Are there any names we can keep an eye on? Uh, to go back to your article and what you, you know, John Mozalak said was that they're, they're looking at a fifth starter. So it's not like they're trying to go out and find some ace to team up with Sonny Gray. Uh, I think they like what they have with Kyle Gibson. Obviously, we think Miles Michaelis is a very serviceable three, four, five guy. Who's uh, somebody else that you think that they could add? to the rotation that, you know, it's, it's not going to make headlines, but it's, it's, it would be a very Cardinals move. Yeah. So I think we can eliminate guys like Garrett Crochet, Eric Fetty, yeah. Jesus Lazardo. The guy I've been looking at is Tyler Anderson with the angels. There you go. Joe, a Joe Adele, Tyler Anderson. Combo there you trade. go. Package <laughs> deal. Let's go, Thomas. Oh yeah. He's a lefty. Um, his ERA is sitting at 2.63. He's 34. So I guess for the Cardinal fans out That's there who right love in, the age. Dude, yeah, right right. The old folks home of the road. Yeah. He's near in his AARP level. So yeah, I think he'd be a great addition. Uh, he doesn't strike out many guys, but he keeps the ball on the ground, which is something that our defense plays into. I think he'd be a nice sneaky grab for us. Wait, hold on. You're telling me he's old and he doesn't strike people out. That is the Cardinal <laughs> way. <laughs> Here in 2024, are you kidding me? But absolutely uh, left handed, left handed is a good yes. thing because outside of Steven Matz, uh, you don't really have that in the rotation. And again, be prepared to hear things like, well, Zach Thompson's looking pretty good in Memphis and he can be that fifth guy. I mean, just be prepared for that kind of talk, guys. Just, just throwing it out there because you know it's yep. going to happen and they'll try to fill these holes with people who already in the organization if they can, but uh, if they venture outside. Um, if the Mets fall off, what would you think about Jose Quintana 
coming back to St. Louis. I, I thought that would have been a, a decent one, you know, very familiar with him, and he was quite successful here. I haven't kept up with him, actually, ever since he left. I know he was injured last year, right? Yeah, he was hurt a so. lot last year. But, uh, but again, a guy that I feel like, you know, if you could have kept him, like, looking back on it, you'd be like, yeah, yeah probably would have been a good idea, despite the he, injury, because it was, a, you know, the fluke thing. It does happen. But I don't know. That's another left-hander that I thought uh, yeah. maybe keep an eye on that, uh, he, you know, Cardinal fans were kind of bummed when uh, he ended like, up going off to New York. We liked him enough to pitch him game one of a playoff game, so there must be and something was, in there still. And he was really good. It wasn't his yeah. fault. <laughs> right. So, all right, there's a couple of names to to think about. But, you know, as we get closer and you start to see more teams fall out of contention, because that's the problem right now is there's only three or four teams that all right, that you could probably say, yes. yeah, they're, yeah, they're not going to go anywhere. You got the Sox, you got the Marlins, the Rockies, the A's, the Angels. And then it comes to the Mets as far as like records. And the Mets aren't exactly that far out just yet. We think there's somebody who's going to punt and probably trade some people away, but uh, you don't know. There's still plenty of time for things to to change a little bit in the uh, whole grand scheme of things with the uh, that third wild card. So anyway, make sure you guys are following Thomas on uh, Twitter X. Make sure you guys head over to redbirdranch.com. Check out his articles and the rest of the great group over there. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Chicago series real quick, Thomas? What do you got for us? A sweep. Sweet <laughs> by who? Hold on, by who? Yeah, the Cardinals. Sorry, by Cardinals. Oh, okay, I, all right. Just making it's, sure. Just making sure. It's a big right, series. Thomas, for us. Says, get, yeah. Thomas says, "Get your brooms out, boys and girls." Sweep happening this weekend at Wrigley. All right. Thanks for making <laughs> Locked Up Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, give us a follow on Twitter X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio, as well as uh, at Thomas Govain. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. And we will see you next time talking about a sweep in Chicago, according to Thomas, on Locked on Cardinals.